Hi, my name is Jerry Clay and I'm an interventional radiologist and today we're going to talk about fluoro-CT. Uh, fluoro-CT is a technique which some of you will be familiar with where we use real-time CT scanning in order to place needles so that we can uh, perform biopsies, drainages and for today's case, radiofrequency ablation. Uh, today's case is on an 80-year-old gentleman who's not in particularly good condition and he's got a single lesion in his right lung which we're proposing to treat by radiofrequency ablation using the RETA therapeutic system. This is a 14 gauge needle which we're going to place percutaneously under general anaesthesia with fluoro CT guidance. The lesion's in the right lung, it's in the superior segment of the right lower lobe. And where it's placed, we have a choice of going either prone or supine. The approach from supine is a little bit trickier than the approach from prone, but we're going to use the supine approach today because this eight year old gentleman isn't going to ventilate very well if we put him prone. So, what we're going to demonstrate is the lesion, the choice of approach and then the way to get the probe into the lesion under fluoro-CT guidance such that the operator's hands stay nicely out of the beam and we've got a good quick skin-to-skin -skin time. For this technique you need to have a working parietal lobe which I'm sure the consultant radiologists and trainees watching this video will all have. Okay, so let's have a look at the pictures. This is the target lesion. It's a little colorectal metastasis here in this gentleman's right lung. He's been staged with PET and other CTs. This is his only manifestation of metastatic disease. So our procedure today is being conducted with curative intent. As you can see, he's generally generously proportioned. We're talking about a chap here who's running a BMI comfortably in the mid-30s. So whilst we could approach this prone, which may seem to be a desirable thing to do, the problem is that ventilating this 80-year-old prone is going to be problematic. So what we're aiming to do today is to come in with him supine, which makes it a lot easier for the anaesthetist, with an oblique approach, oblique in two angles. So we're coming in oblique in this XY plane, but we're also coming in oblique in the Z axis. So we'll be angling up from below to get into this lesion because we've got to get in below this needle. So later in the video, I'll be showing you how the anaesthetist controls the breathing and produces a picture which presents this nodule in a position with respect to the ribs that I can access it from. And I'll show you how we're going to angle into reach this nodule with the radiofrequency ablation probe. Okay, we're doing patient positioning here. As we said before, this is uh, a fairly generously proportioned gentleman. We've put a couple of wedges under the right hand side because we're aiming for a lesion which I think is about there ish. Um, we haven't actually confirmed that yet. As you can see, we've got some abdominal issues in the way. Um, and we're, we've raised this right side here so that we can get uh, access. Uh, once we've got him in the gantry, we'll show you the clearance between the patient's wall, abdominal wall and the gantry and uh, show you the needle and we'll uh, demonstrate that it's not actually going to be possible to do the traditional perpendicular approach to reach this lesion. So we are going to have to angle in for this guy. Nothing else is going to work. Doing the trial kit, this procedure is done in general anaesthetic. Uh, so having got the patient in position, we're right on the lower limit of table range. We're now going to just run him in and see if we've got a fit. Now control your side. Good, this is happy. Okay, so we've got the alignment lasers switched on, it shows me the plane of interest. And we've got a reasonable amount of room. Okay, let's see if we can find the lesion. Looking at the uh, laser, you can see where the laser's coming in the skin. Uh, we're going to need an entry point here that's probably off the order of 10 centimetres or so uh, below that laser line when we have to move in. So we're currently running 120 kb, 50 ma. Um, this is a soft tissue density in the lung, so we've got high inherent contrast, so we can actually run quite low doses from here. Um, so if we look at the image quality that we're getting at the moment, the zoomed image, that's way more image quality than we need, so we can run the dose back. Okay, let's take that down to, say, 20, see what we get. So we're going to take it back now down to 20 mA. We're currently running on 50, we'll run it back down to 20. These are four millimetre slice thicknesses, which is about the spatial resolution we need. With fluoro CT, we get spatial resolution through. So there we are, this is less than half the dose. Image quality is still perfectly acceptable. Uh, in fact, if we really wanted to show what the machine's capable of doing, we can take it down to the minimum. Let's take it right down to 10 and we'll have a look at that. So 10 is the lowest dose the machine can do. So we're now operating about 140th the dose for a typical diagnostics uh, slice. And that's getting a little bit noisier than I'd like, uh, particularly for teaching purposes, so we'll take that a bit. Go back up to the 20. Uh, the other point about fluoro CT is you get resolution through zoom. So there's, there's no kernel manipulation in fluoro CT. Uh, to get spatial resolution, you just magnify the image. So it's unlike other CT techniques in that regard, because obviously 
it's only the region of interest that we're uh, chasing, and I'm chasing the entire content of that. Okay, looking good, we'll scrub up and we'll get the show underway. So we've now prepped and draped. You can see the uh, room here is fairly tight. I'll just uh, cut to the actual probe itself. This is the Rita Starburst XL, which is a 25 centimetre probe from one end to the other. Fully deployed, the tines come out the end, um, and you can see it's a fairly substantial piece of kit. So I've got this much length to play with inside the patient, but I've got this much handle on the outside. As you can see, straight and perpendicular approach is simply not going to work in this situation because there's not enough room between the patient and the uh, gantry. So we're going to need to oblique in to reach the target lesion today. Okay, even though I've got general anaesthesia, we reduce the uh, inhalational requirements by using local anaesthetic. It's also, because I'm an interventional radiologist, I always feel nervous sticking needles in people without any local anaesthetic. So we're going to draw up some lignocaine 1% in a sec. Um, we're going to flush the system with a bit of saline and then park the needle. The Rita needle has a little bevel on the end, works like a Chiba needle, so there's a certain amount of steer with that bevel. So use that bevel to negotiate underneath ribs. Uh, the side of the bevel is marked by this little port. Desensize the location now, we're just popping the needle in and having a bit of think about exactly where it's gone. Watching on the Now, bending the needle to track beneath the rib. My hand is out of the band. Just arriving underneath the rib there, you can see the needle appearing on the top right of that image. I'm just going to move the patient, pull the patient towards me a little bit so that we can present the lesion in its entirety. Now my hand's out of the bed, we've got the needle up against, getting close to the margin of the target now, just about to cross the pleura. Got complete control. Now we're just deploy the starburst times through the middle of the lesion. The next that come down a little bit lower. The pleasures of this arrangement is you're watching real time, you can basically change things as you go along. You have to be able to do, get a pneumothorax, things change shape, just back a little bit. Take it out to two centimetres, deploy the times. Okay, that's the picture we're looking to see. It puts the lesion in the middle of the deployed times at two centimetres time deployment. Take that back. Check the road okay over that. Okay, we're looking good. What you've seen today is the use of the Fluoro CT system to place a radio frequency ablation needle into the nodule. Apologies for some of the video sync which wasn't quite spot on and this is our first video, but I think you get the idea. Our other videos will cover more of the technical aspects of Fluoro CT and more of how to actually get the needle steered exactly into the spot that you want. Low dose, no dose to the operator's hand, low dose to the patient's, quick and accurate.